Hey everybody, I am so excited to share my mountain time pullover with you guys. It is an awesome knit. I designed this top down raglan sweater in moss stitch, which is a great basic stitch. It just consists of knits and purl stitches, but it gives such a great texture to the sweater. So if this is your first time knitting a top down raglan sweater, I suggest you start with my fall bluff sweater. I will link that here for you guys, but check that out first because that'll just help you understand um, more of a basic top down raglan construction. This gets a little bit more complicated with the moss stitch and the raglan increases and the ribbed raglan stitches here. But if you're ready to roll, pay attention. To get the free PDF of the pattern, please click the link in the video description. It'll take you to my website. You'll need to scroll down and enter your email into the pink box, and the page will then redirect to this beautiful PDF of the pattern. It gives you all the supplies listed there. It'll tell you all the different sizes. It's written in eight different sizes. It'll give you the finished bust measurements of each size and the intended ease. So it's supposed to have about four to eight inches of positive ease. I knit a size three. I'm about a size 36 inch bust. So that size works well for me. Um, so positive ease means how much bigger the sweater circumference is than your bust. So if I'm a 36 inch bust and the finished bust measurement of the sweater is 42 inches. That's about six inches of positive ease. So just wanted to explain that a little bit. So pick a size that makes sense for you. When following a knitting pattern, there are um, eight consecutive numbers that correspond to the eight different sizes. So if you see a list of numbers that are eight numbers and you're knitting a size three, you pay attention to the third number. You follow the instructions at the third number. So if it tells you to increase you know, a certain number of times, you're gonna look at the third number in that, that list of eight consecutive numbers for a size three. All right, so I can't wait to show you guys how to knit this. It's a great sweater pattern. I love how classic of a construction it is. I made it a tad cropped for me. Feel free to adjust arm length and body length as much as you'd like. If you'd like to knit this for um, a man and arm length and body length need to be extended, feel free, just pay attention to the finished bust size that makes sense for you. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this. Make sure to follow me and subscribe to my channel. Hit the alert button so you know when all of my patterns are published. I'm looking forward to sharing this with you guys. Let's get started. Getting ready to cast on for the collar. I am using a nine millimeter needle to cast on for the collar. Um, I'm, I will switch to a 10 millimeter, 24 inch needle after I'm done with the collar. Going down a needle size just helps to add a little bit more structure to the collar. If you tend to rib a little tightly, you can maintain the same needle size. If you um, tend to rib a little more loosely, you might wanna go down a needle size for the collar. Totally up to you. Um, I ended up not going down um, a needle size for the ribbing for the sleeves and on the body. Totally up to you though if you would like to do that. So make sure you have a long enough piece of yarn to cast on for your stitch amount. I am going to cast on 64 inches, 64 stitches for my size. Um, so just look at what size you're making, sizes one through eight, and figure out how many stitches you're supposed to cast on for your size. So we're gonna start by making a slip knot and putting that on our needle. And we're gonna start a long tail cast on by making sure our tail is in front. And we are going to start casting on. We've got one stitch on. If we're supposed to cast on 64 stitches, I'm actually gonna cast on one extra 65 so that I can drop that last stitch when I join in the round. I've got one stitch marker handy here. So we just start casting on. That's two, three, four, five, two, 63, 64. So I've got my 64 stitches. I'm gonna cast on one extra 65 because we're gonna end up dropping that stitch. So now it's time to join in the round. And to join in the round, I like to lay my work flat and make sure my stitches are all facing inwards. I've got my cast on edge here kind of going towards the center here. And now um, I'm just going to push the stitches to the end here. 
and I'm going to slip the last stitch on the left hand needle over to the right hand needle, slip the last stitch that was on the right hand needle over that stitch on the left hand needle and drop it. And then I just pull tight here. And then I place my beginning of round marker. And now we're gonna start our ribbing for about three inches or so. So we're just going to knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. And so you continue this all the way around. We have an even number of stitches, so if we started with a knit one, we should end on a purl one. So just keep doing this all the way around. I'm nearing the first round of my one by one rib. I just wanted to show you how to slip that stitch marker. So now we're on our second round and we just knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches. Our first stitch is a knit stitch, our second stitch is the purl stitch. So we just continue knitting one, purling one. So I'm gonna continue this until I'm just under three inches here for the collar. I'm finishing my last round of one by one rib on my nine millimeter needles. I am just under three inches here. I'll show you what it's looking like. You can just measure from the cast on edge, just under three inches here. And basically what we're gonna do is our next round will be our raglan setup round and we're gonna switch to our larger needles if you wanna switch to larger needles. So I'll show you how to do both of those things. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you have seven other stitch markers. I am just using pieces of scrap yarn for my stitch markers. Um, nothing fancy over here. But basically you just make sure you have seven other stitch markers in different colors. Um, in filming, I, I think I switched to an orange stitch marker later on. Just so you know, I, get, I switched to um, a different color later on in the video. All right, so we are going to do two things. We are going to strategically place our stitch markers on this next round while also switching to our new needle. So I'm actually going to finish my round here and knit the first stitch so my stitch marker doesn't um, fall off. So we're gonna knit one, okay? Now I'm gonna switch and take my next needle size. And we, the first thing that we're doing is knitting one, purling one, knitting one, purling one, knitting one. So we're doing five rib stitches and then we're gonna place another stitch marker. We've already completed one stitch. So now I'm going to purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, okay. And we've got our other needles still over here. I'm gonna pull this through so I, I don't lose that work. I'm gonna place a stitch marker here now. So we've completed five rib stitches. These will be five raglan stitches that we always complete. Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. We maintain this ribbing throughout the entire raglan increase section in, on the entire yoke. Okay, so now we're going to knit across the front stitches. For my pattern, I'm going to rib across 13 stitches. So you continue in the collar rib pattern. So my next stitch is a purl. So I'm gonna do this across 13 stitches. Purling one, knitting one, purling one, knitting one. All right, 13. I've done 13 stitches, or however many stitches you need to complete. You place another stitch marker. So this is the front, this is the front raglan, this is the front, and this is the other side of the front raglan stitches. So it's another five stitches of knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. These five stitches will always be completed like that. So you just work across these five stitches with your larger needle here. I'm still working off the smaller needle onto the larger needle. I've worked across those five stitches, so I'm gonna place another stitch marker. Now I'm gonna work across the left sleeve stitches for nine stitches, or however many stitches your left sleeve will have. The sleeve stitches and the fronts and the back stitches will have the same number of stitches. So this one, we're continuing the rib again, 
pearl one, knit one, pearl one, knit one across nine stitches or however many stitches you need to um, work across for your left. Worked across those nine stitches. I'm going to place another stitch marker. So that is my left sleeve. Now I'm going to work across the back raglan stitches. So these, this set of five and this side of five were the front raglan stitches. Now I'm going to work across the back raglan stitches. So again, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one across five stitches. We're continuing this ribbing across five stitches for the back raglan stitches in between the left sleeve and the back. Now I'm going to place another stitch marker and now we're working across the back stitches. So we've done the front. These are the front raglan. This is the sleeve. This is the back raglan. Now I need to work across the same number of stitches I worked across for the front. So for my size it was 13. So I'm going to do 13 for the back and this one is purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one across however many stitches you need to work for the back. I've worked across those back 13 stitches. I'm going to place another stitch marker. And now I'm working the f I'm working five more raglan stitches in the established rib pattern. Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one four stitches. Here's five stitches. I should end on a knit. Now the remaining stitches are the right sleeve stitches. So that should be the same number of stitches we worked on the other side. So I should have nine stitches, two, four, six, eight, nine, which I do. And we're going to continue working to the beginning of round marker in that established rib pattern. So this is across the right sleeve. So when you're finished, and I'm still again knitting off that one set of circular needles onto the larger set of circular needles, I'm almost done here. And here's my last stitch. Here's my beginning of round marker. I'm actually going to slip this marker on and move this one stitch off. It can be tricky with that stitch marker because you don't want it to slide off. So I'm actually going to just slip this last stitch onto my needle here. Okay, so I'm at the beginning of round. It's hard for demonstration purposes to end right at the beginning of the round because the stitch marker can easily fall off. But we have completed our collar and the last round, which was the raglan setup round. So I just wanted to explain what all these different sections are again now that we've finished the raglan setup round and we're ready to do our raglan increase round. So we have five front raglan stitches in between the left sleeve and the front. We have our front stitches, which we will be completing moss stitch across. Then we have our five raglan stitches on the front in between the front and the left sleeve. We have our five raglan stitches in the back here in between the left sleeve and the back stitches. We've got our back stitches, which we'll be doing moss stitch across. Then we've got our five raglan stitches in between the back and the right sleeve. So we will be completing, when we do a raglan increase round, which is what we're about to do, you're gonna be increasing eight stitches on either side of these five raglan stitches. So we've got these five stitches here, 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 and here. And we will always have five stitches in between those, those raglan stitch markers. So you will be increasing on the outside of those stitch markers always. This will always be a knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, always. So you're gonna do an increase here and an increase here, an increase here, here on the outsides of those five stitches all the way across. And so that's eight increases. So I'm gonna show you how to do a raglan increase round now followed by a regular round. You will be completing raglan increase rounds every other round. So I'm gonna show you how to do these two rounds and then you will just be repeating those two rounds until you get to the stitch count you're supposed to have for the fronts and the set in the sleeves. All right, so let's get started with our first raglan increase round. So we will always complete our five raglan stitches, one, two, 
three, four, five here. And then you slip the stitch marker because again, you do the, you always want to make sure you have these five stitches and the increases go on the outside. So we're on the outside of our first stitch marker. We're at the front here and now we're going to be making one left. Making one left means you insert your needle from front to back and you knit through the back. So now we've increased a stitch and now we are going to start doing our moss stitch. So when we have our increase round, we make one left and then we will always knit one, purl one, all the way to the next stitch marker, knit one, purl one. And you can see now we're working opposite of the collar stitches. So I had a purl stitches here, so now we're knit one, purl one, so it's opposite of the collar stitches. So work all the way across the front in your moss stitch to the next stitch marker, which is where the next five raglan stitches start. So you're going to be stopping right before that stitch marker. And again, you started with a knit stitch, so you should end with a knit stitch. We have an odd number of stitches and we will always have an odd number of stitches. So you're going to start with the same stitch you end with. Okay, so now we're on the outside of that stitch marker. Again, we need to preserve the five stitches here. So we're gonna make one right. We're to the right of the stitch marker, so we're making one right. And to make one right, you insert your needle from back to front and knit through the front. And then you simply just slip that stitch marker and work these five raglan stitches, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, all the way to that next stitch marker. Okay, so we put the stitch marker on our needle, slip that stitch marker, because again, we need to keep these five stitches always increasing on the outside of those stitches. Now we are to the left of that stitch marker, so we need to make one left. Insert the needle from front to back, knit through the back. And now we continue our moss stitch. So just pausing here, we've completed our five raglan stitches, made an increase, worked moss stitch across the front made an increase in before we hit our five raglan stitches. We worked those five raglan stitches for the front. We've done an increase on the left sleeve now. Now we're gonna work across the left sleeve all the way to the next stitch marker, which is in front of the next five raglan stitches. You work all the way to that next stitch marker. And again, you should end with a knit stitch before that next stitch marker we are to the right of the stitch marker. So we are going to make one right by inserting our needle from back to front and knitting through the front. We slip our stitch marker and work these five raglan stitches in the established rib pattern by knitting one, purling one, knitting one, purling one. Five stitches here, slip the stitch marker. Now we are to the left of that stitch marker, so we need to make one left. Insert the needle from front to back knit through the back. Okay, so now we've done the front, the sleeve, and now we're gonna work moss stitch across the back. Always knit one, purl one. Knitting one, purling one. All the way to the next stitch marker, which will be the last set of raglan stitches. All right, I'm just to my last set of raglan stitches in between the back and the other sleeve, so now you, um, we are going to make sure we maintain the five raglan stitches here so we work our increase on the outside of that rag of that stitch marker and we're going we're to the right of the stitch marker so we're going to make one right by inserting the needle from back to front and knitting through the front slip that stitch marker now we work those five raglan stitches ending with a knit one, slip the stitch marker. We are to the left of the stitch marker now, and this is our last stitch marker before our beginning of round marker. So this is our right sleeve that we're working across now. So we will need to make one last increase before this st last stitch marker, before the beginning of round stitch marker. We're making one left now, insert from front to back, knit through the back. Continue the moss stitch, knit one, Purl one across the right sleeve. I have one stitch left. I'm ending with a knit stitch. And now we're going to do our last increase now. Make one right 
insert from back to front, knit through the front. So now you've, in, you've increased eight stitches across your first raglan round. So now you're gonna be completing um, what I just call like a regular round, which is maintaining these rib stitches, these five rib stitches in our raglan stitches, and then also maintaining moss stitch, so we're not increasing. But just taking a second, so if we started with, not, with 13 stitches across the front, after we've completed one round, we should have 15 stitches. If we started with nine stitches for each sleeve here, we should have 11 stitches in this section now. So you're increasing by two stitches in those front sections and the sleeve sections every raglan increase round for a total of eight increase stitches. And so now I'm just gonna show you how to do a regular, um, a regular round. So we just did a raglan increase round and now it's time to just do um, a regular round. So we just rib these stitches in the same established rib pattern for these raglan stitches. So it's knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. All right, we're going to slip the stitch. And now instead of increasing, we're just going to work moss stitch. And we work moss stitch by purling one knitting one, purling one, okay? So moss stitch is repeat, you have two rounds of knit stitches, two rounds of purl stitches, and then you shift where you have the knit one, purl one. But because we're increasing each, uh, because we're increasing every other round, it works out that we complete every raglan increase round the same way and every non-raglan increase round the same way. So you just continue knitting one, purling one, knitting one, purling one. I'm sorry, purling one, knitting one, purling one, knitting one, purling one, knitting one, all the way to the next stitch marker. Okay, so once you work across the front again, you just continue the moss stitch ending in a purl stitch on the front, slip the marker, rib across, the five raglan stitches in between the front and the left sleeve. Then you slip the marker and work moss stitch, purling one, knitting one, purling one, knitting one, across the left sleeve, all the way to the next stitch marker. Once you get to the next stitch marker, again, you'll just work those five raglan stitches in between the left sleeve and the back now. You'll slip the marker and we're gonna work moss stitch across the back, purling one, knitting one, purling one, knitting one, all the way to the next stitch marker which will be the five raglan stitches in between the back and the left front. I'm sorry, the back and the right front. All right, now we're gonna do a purl one, knit one, purl one, across the back here to the next stitch marker. end with a purl stitch here and then you complete five raglan stitches in our rib stitches and now we slip the stitch marker and we're working across the last section purl one knit one purl one all the way across to the beginning of round marker all right so I've completed that second round and you can see our moss stitch starting to come together across the front. So to continue on round three is the same as round one for our raglan increase round. Again every other round we increase those eight stitches so you just start by doing rib stitch across those five raglan stitches. You slip the stitch marker and now we make one left. Insert the needle front to back, knit through the back, 
And now we actually just continue to do a knit one purl one. So the way our increases work, it allows us to do this, to, do, to continue knit one purl one on all the increase rows. So you'll see though, as we start working, our moss stitches coming together, which is knitting one, purling one for two rounds, and then purling one, knitting one for two rounds. But because we've got our increases, it kind of shifts how we're doing our ribbing. So um, even though it seems complicated, rounds one and two, raglan increase round, followed by a non-raglan increase round, you just repeat those two rounds until you get to the number of stitches you're supposed to have for the fronts and the backs and the sleeves. So the pattern will say continue round, rounds one and two, X number of times more for a total of X stitches. So you just continue increasing for those total number of increases you're supposed to have. Um, and then you will divide for the body. So I'll see you back here when it's time to divide for the body. I do want to mention here, um, you will need to switch to a 32 inch or even a 40 inch circular needle if you'd like um, as the stitches become too many to fit on this circular needle. So to do that, you just do the same thing you did before when we switched from the um, 9 millimeter needle to the 10 millimeter needle. Now you're just switching from a 24 inch, a 10 millimeter 24 inch needle to a 10 millimeter 32 inch or 10 millimeter 42, 40 inch circular needle. So um, just keep that in mind as you get going. So I'll see you back here when it's time to divide for the body. So again, just keep following the instructions for rounds one and two for the raglan increase rounds. Okay, I am finishing up my last round here before I need to divide for the body. So I'm finishing after just a regular round, not a raglan increase round. The pattern will tell you to continue the raglan stitches until you, and t and the raglan increases until you have a certain number of stitches for the front and the sleeve. Um, one thing I wanted to note here that the beginning of round marker is between the left sleeve and the front. And we have these five raglan stitches that are, are ribbing. This whole thing will become the front, including the raglan stitches. So let me show you how we're gonna divide for the body here. We're gonna knit across the whole front now, including the raglan stitches. Then we're gonna remove the sleeve stitches and put them on a piece of waist yarn. So make sure you have two scraps of waist yarn that are long enough to hold all of the sleeve stitches. Then we're gonna cast on stitches of the underarm and knit across the back. Then we're gonna remove the other sleeve stitches, cast on stitches, for the underarm on that side, and then we will continue just knitting the body. So I'm actually gonna start by working these front stitches. I'm gonna work across these five raglan stitches, and like I said, the five raglan stitches on this side and the other side will become part of the front. So I'm actually gonna remove this stitch marker now. Okay, so I worked those rib stitches. Now I'm gonna continue the moss stitch. So even though this stitch was a knit stitch and this stitch needs to be a knit stitch, that doesn't matter now because we are just going to fix it all on the next round. So you work moss stitch, continuing working the moss stitch all the way to the next stitch marker. All right, I'm knitting up in moss stitch to that next stitch marker. Even though I ended with the knit stitch, I'm gonna remove this stitch marker and continue in the rib until I get to the next stitch marker. And that will denote the beginning of the sleeve, the left sleeve. Okay, so now 
I am going to remove this stitch marker, take my tapestry needle, I am going to remove all of these sleeve stitches that are just the moss stitches for that sleeve. So we're going to take these stitches off all the way to the next stitch marker. And then that is it for the sleeve stitches, the left sleeve. It's our left sleeve because it sits on our left side of our body as if we were wearing it, not as if we were looking at it. So you just continue doing this all the way until you get to the next stitch marker. Okay, I'm all the way to that next stitch marker. I'm gonna remove this now, pull this yarn through making sure all of these stitches are sitting comfortably on this piece of waste yarn. So this is the sleeve, so we will be working those stitches later. So we're literally going to bring our right hand needle to our left hand needle. We are going to just ignore these stitches now that are sitting on our waste yarn. We are going to cast on three stitches or however many stitches your size calls for. I'm casting on three stitches. And now I'm going to continue working that rib stitch until the next stitch marker. Once I get to that next stitch marker, I'm going to remove it. This is the back of the work. I'm going to continue in moss stitch now, knitting one, purling one, all of the way across the back until I get to the next stitch marker. All right, I'm working moss stitch up until that next stitch marker. I'm removing the stitch marker and now these stitches I'm going to continue in the rib stitch already established but these will become the back stitches. And now once we get to this next stitch marker, we're going to do the same thing with our other piece of waste yarn and our tapestry needle. And we are going to put the rest of the stitches all the way up to that beginning of round stitch marker all the way over here back onto our needle, back onto our piece of waste yarn. So same thing. Remove the stitch marker and start placing all of these stitches on the piece of waste yarn. Okay, so I've got I finished putting all the sleeve stitches on this piece of waste yarn. I've pulled it through. I've um, pulled this work forward now so my sleeve stitches are in front and now it's time to join the back and the front. On this side we need to cast on three stitches at the underarm or however many stitches your pattern calls for. And then now we're at the beginning of the round. Okay, um, So we are at the beginning of the round now. So we're going to keep this beginning of round marker and now we're going to start moss stitch and we need to look back and continue the stitch that we had started. So this was the end of our ribbing over here. And this needs to be a knit stitch here. So this is purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. So we need to start purling on this first round here. So purl, knit, Pearl, and it should be kind of the opposite of what you see in this ribbing because now the whole thing will be moss stitch and we will no longer have that ribbing. So now you can see we have our moss stitch going. So now you're going to just continue working in the round, working the fronts and the backs, including those underarm cast on stitches. And I will show you how to work those stitches because it can be um, a little tricky working those underarm cast on stitches. 
And when you get back over to the other side where that ribbing was, you're just going to ignore it and keep continuing the moss stitch through that ribbing. And I just wanted to show you what it's like to work those underarm cast on stitches using the backwards loop cast on method. So you just knit them as if they were normal stitches, but they can be a little tricky and they can fall off the needle easily. So just be very careful as you work them. They can, like I said, they can fall off pretty easily. So that's how you work those. And you might have a little bit of a gap and that's okay. You can always seam things up at the end if they're loose, but that's how you work those underarm cast on stitches there. So like I said, you'll keep working that moss stitch now across those rib stitches and just continue on around to that beginning of round marker, which is over here now. And you'll work those underarm cast on stitches the same way over there. So now you're simply just completing moss stitch in the round until the pattern says to get to a certain, you know, you'll knit a certain length from the underarm. You can measure from that underarm cast on. It'll tell you to, you know, knit to a certain length from that underarm cast on edge. So that's where you will measure from. And you'll just continue this. We just basically removed the sleeves and connected the front and the back of the work. And now we're just continuing this moss stitch in the round. So I will see you back here once I have completed my moss stitch to the length that the pattern calls for. One thing I wanted to show you guys as you start knitting, um, and you can either use a tapestry needle and um, a piece of waste yarn, but um, if you wanted to push stitches onto a piece of waste yarn, but I, I have discovered these knitting extension cords I just wanted to share with you guys. If you make a lot of top-down raglan sweaters, it's nice to be able to try on the sweater as you go. And instead of moving all of these stitches onto a piece of waste yarn, the, this simple product, these are knitting extension cords. Um, I have them linked in the video description if you wanna go check them out. But all you do is stick the ends onto the needle tips here. You just kind of really shove them in there. And then you do the other side. And then you can push the stitches off of the circular needle because typically that circular needle isn't long enough for us to like comfortably slip the the sweater on over our head so now you can just gently move these stitches out so they so the sweater gets to the width that you'll need it to comfortably pull it over your head and try it on and then when you're done you simply just shift these stitches back onto your needle and then you can just take the knitting extension cord off and you can just keep knitting to the length you would like to knit to. So that's just how you can use some knitting extension cords to try on your work. But if you're making this sweater for yourself, I really encourage you guys to try it on to see how it's fitting lengthwise for the body before you start the ribbing. Okay, I've completed the body to the point I need or I want to knit it to. So I've tried it on. I've made sure that it fits me the way I want to. It's, um, I've knit about, oh gosh, nine inches or so um, from the underarm. I want this to fit a tad cropped. I want it to kind of sit at the top of my pant line. So I've tried it on to see where that will fit. So I'm finishing up my last double moss stitch round here. I want to make sure I pay attention. You know, I've writ the, written the pattern a certain way, but you basically want to make sure that you start the ribbing opposite the stitch, the two stitches that you um, have just made. So basically, I want to make sure I've finished after my second um, purl row, starting with the purl. So, um, you know, depending on how the pattern's written, that's probably like around four on the moss stitch. So basically, when I start the ribbing, I want to make sure if I've if I've started with a pearl, with two purl stitches previously here, I want to start with a knit stitch so the ribbing starts taking shape um, the way it's supposed to. So if I started 
if I started um, with a purl stitch doing purl knit purl, it would just, con I, I would have already knit two rows. So um, hopefully that makes sense, but basically you just want to make sure if you're knitting one, purling one, you've ended with two rows where, two rounds where you've started with purl stitches here. So that will just help the work look nice. And so now all you're doing is knitting one, purling one, all the way around and I'm going to continue my ribbing until I hit about two and a half inches long. You can make the ribbing as long or as short as you would like, but that is the length that I'm going for. So I will see you back here once I've done the bottom ribbing for two and a half inches. And then when you continue the ribbing, when you go get to the beginning of round again, you're just continuing the knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one just like we did with the collar. So it'll look very similar to the collar. So I'll see you back here when it's time to bind off. One more thing I wanted to note about the bottom ribbing. I'm continuing on with my 10 millimeter needle to do my ribbing. I don't like my body ribbing to be really tight and I also rib a little bit tight to begin with. So if you wanna to switch to a smaller needle, like um, a nine millimeter needle to do the bottom ribbing in, Feel free to start the ribbing knitting onto a nine millimeter needle from the 10 millimeter needle. All right, I am finishing up my last ribbing um, one by one rib round and I'm at about two and a half inches now of ribbing and I just wanna show you what to do when it's time to bind off. You can complete the ribbing as long or as short as you would like. This is just my preference. I completed about eight rounds here. And now I'm gonna show you what to do to bind off once we get to that beginning of round marker. So once to bind off, you continue to knit in the pattern, knit one, purl one, and then you slip that first stitch over that second stitch and drop it. And now we've bound off one stitch. And we're gonna work the next stitch, which is a knit stitch and then you slip the previous stitch over the one you just knit and drop it. So you'll never have more, you shouldn't have more than one stitch on your right hand needle as you continue to bind off. Okay, so you continue the one by one rib, but you are just slipping the stitch and dropping it off as you go all of the way around and I'll show you what to do you get to the end of the round. So just continue in this fashion all the way around. And make sure, one thing I want to do, make sure you kind of bind off somewhat loosely. Don't bind off real tight or else the work will be super tight. There are many different ways to bind off. This is kind of like the most classic way, but a lot of people don't like this bind off because it can be a little tight, but I don't mind it with super bulky weight yarn. And it's pretty straightforward and simple for those who are newer to knitting. But there's a tubular bind off, Italian bind off, there's lots of different ways to bind off that might give you more give if you're interested in learning those. I'll see you back here when I'm almost done binding off. All right, I'm nearing the end here. I'm actually almost running out of yarn, but I just wanna show you how to finish the bind off. So basically, once you have one stitch left, all I typically do is just, you can cut the yarn, if, but I'm at the end right here, and then you just pull the yarn through. And then um, I'll show you, we'll show you how to um, close this up. And basically you just thread your tapestry needle and you can just seam up the work like this. We're just connecting the first stitch there and I typically just go back through like this, close up the work and then you can just weave your ends in like this and pull your yarn through and snip it. All right, so we finished knitting the body 
Now it's time to knit the sleeves and you'll be knitting each sleeve the same way. So first thing we need to do is remove all of these stitches from the piece of waste yarn and put them on our 10 millimeter 16 inch circular needle. Or if you'd like to use double pointed needles, feel free. Um, I've got all my supplies linked in the video description, so be sure to check all of those out. But basically, you just start putting on all of these stitches. You can take the piece of scrap yarn out as you go. I usually tend to just wait till the end. So I'll continue around picking up all these stitches. Just make sure you're getting all the stitches here. Okay, so now I kind of like to shift all my stitches onto um, off the needle onto the extension in between the circular needles and then it's easier to kind of pull that scrap yarn out. Now we need to take our yarn and join at the underarm, but we also need to make sure we pick up for those three stitches or however many stitches you cast on at the underarm. It should be an even, um, I'm sorry, it should be an odd number of stitches um, because our work here, you can see we have a purl stitch and a knit stitch over here, a purl stitch and a knit stitch here. And when we knit moss stitch, um, we need to make sure we have an even number of stitches when we're knitting in the round. So I'm gonna take my yarn and I'm going to pick up three stitches here and I'm going to pick up a stitch here and you just pull the yarn up like this three stitches one two three and you might have a little bit of a gap. I am going to um, place the stitch marker here. Now you can, and then we are simply going to start knitting moss stitch now, continuing with the pattern that was already established. So if you look, you can see the second stitch in has two knit stitches right here. So we are going to start with a knit. So that stitch you can see should be a purl. So knit one, purl one. And you will have somewhat of a gap and I usually just seam up that gap at the underarm at the end. I'll show you how to do that. But now you're just going to work all the way around and knit one, purl one. I'm nearing the end of my first round here. You can see where I've got that yarn where I joined the work and I just wanted to show you how to knit across those underarm stitches. So I'm gonna continue knitting one, purling one, and then when I get to those stitches, okay, so this is the first stitch I picked up at the underarm. It's gonna be super loose. So you can just take the tail and kind of pull it there you go. And the next stitch is a knit stitch. Then a purl stitch. And then again, it'll be, it might look kind of loose here. You might have some holes. We'll go back and seam this all up. You just slip the stitch marker and continue in that moss stitch. So we're going to knit one, purl one for the next round. And then we'll do our purl one, knit one purl one, knit one for two rounds. Okay, so continue knitting your moss stitch in the round until you get to your desired sleeve length minus um, about two and a half inches for the cuff. 
So I'm going to have the cuff be about two and a half inches. So if you try this on, just make sure you're leaving enough room for the sleeve cuff. We're going to reduce stitches before we knit the cuff. So I'll show you how to do that. And we're going to decrease every other stitch. So I'm going to slip this stitch marker. I'm going to knit one and then knit two together to reduce the stitches. Knit one, knit two together to reduce the stitches. And we just need to make sure that we're ending up with a, um, we just need to make sure we're ending up with an even number of stitches at the end. So knit one, knit two together, knit one, knit two together, knit one, knit two together, and continue this until you get to um, close to the end, and then you can count and see how many stitches you have and figure out how many more times you need to reduce to keep an even number of stitches. Okay, I'm stopping a little bit before the end here. I have five stitches left, but I have reduced to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 22 stitches. Plus I have five stitches left here. So, and I have just finished a knit a two together. So that is 23 stitches. I'm gonna knit two together. So that's 24 stitches. And then I'm just gonna keep these stitches um, the same and just, just knit one. And just knit those last two stitches. So it's basically just kind of you have to figure out how many stitches um, you need to reduce to to have an even number. So now we're simply just going to knit one, purl one all the way across. So I'm nearing the end of my first rib round here for the cuff knitting one, purling one, and then because we cast on an even number of stitch, or we reduce to an even number of stitches, you should end in a purl one if you started in a knit one. And your stitches will be tight on this stitch marker for some of the smaller sizes. So just continue the knit one, purl one in the round. The length of the cuff you would like, I'm gonna go for about two and a half inches and then we'll bind off and finish off our sleeve. I've reached the cuff length I would like before it's time to bind off. So now I'm just gonna finish that last stitch here and I'm gonna start binding off in the pattern by just knitting one, purling one, and slipping that first stitch over the stitch I just knit and dropping that off. And we'll just continue this all the way around again, just like we bound off for the body. You continue the one by one rib and binding off as you go. Same thing when you get to the end and you have one stitch left. You can remove the needle and cut the yarn. Pull the stitch through here, pull the yarn through. Then you can take your tapestry needle and connect to the beginning of the round here. And then you can weave in your ends.
and there you go. You've got a sleeve done. All right, so now you're gonna complete the same thing for the other sleeve. So you can go back and watch the other sleeve again if you'd like. And then you'll just, um, when we're done with the other sleeve, I'll just show you how to weave in the ends and seam up the underarm. All right, now I've got both of my sleeves done. So basically the sweater is finished. We just need to weave in ends. And I did just wanna take a second to show you how to seam up those armhole gaps. So there might be some gaps at the underarms. So I'll just show you, I, I showed you how to weave in the ends at the ribbing. Um, so you're just gonna do the same thing at the sleeve cuffs, like we did at the bottom ribbing. I'm gonna turn the work inside out and just show you how I seam up armholes. I don't do anything fancy. I basically just weave the end through a tapestry needle and like no exact science here. I just kind of go through the outside um, stitches here around the opening and pull them together. I go through this one and this one and that's it. And I just then weave the yarn back through the stitching here and again like following a stitch through here just kind of make the yarn seem invisible through this weave it back up through and I'll just simply snip the yarn and there we go so you're just going to want to repeat that on the other side and turn your sweater right side out and you're good to go.